Hi, it's Dawn from Ninja Bunny Crochet. Today I have for us to do this extra thick hot pad. These work up super fast. They're basically all single crochet. You have these great little ridges here which help keep the heat away from whatever uh, surface you are putting your hot item on. You can use this to put a pan on or you can or something from whatever you take out of the microwave or you can actually use this to take something out of the microwave. These also work well if you are putting like little uh, housewarming gifts together and you want to make one of these, maybe a pot holder, uh, one of those towel toppers like the video tutorial from last week. In fact, I will put a link in the description box below to all of my little household crochet items so that you'll have a nice little playlist together of all the little household items that you could make to put together in like this neat little gift basket. Or you could make these to put on your craft show table if you're doing a craft show. So let's drop the camera down and we'll talk about the yarn, the hook, and anything else you might need to make one of these cool little pot, hold, uh, hot pads or pot holder, however you want to use this item. The yarn I used was, um, this was Lily Sugar and Cream. I had a cone. This is um, what I had left over on the cone, but you're not going to use a lot of yarn. You're only going to use about two ounces, two and a half, about two and a half ounces, a little bit over two ounces of yarn, which is equivalent to about 120 yards. So if you're going to use like an ombre of this, um, the ombres or the multicolors of the Lily Sugar and Cream come in two ounce balls. So you might have to get um, two of them because that's only about 95 yards on the um, multicolors of the ombres, but if you get a solid color ball, they come in two and a half ounces, and that's about 120 yards, so you'll only need one ball to make um, this hot pad, but like I said, I happen to have a cone, so I had enough yarn left over on this cone to make a couple of these um, hot pads. So this is a medium four, 100% cotton yarn, so any medium for cotton yarn will do. I do recommend using cotton yarn because cotton yarn is a little more heat resistant versus like an acrylic yarn because acrylic might end up melting on you. So anyway, this was Lily's Sugar and Cream. There is also um, Peaches and Cream is 100% cotton yarn. You can use Premier Home Cotton that does, I believe, have some nylon in it I believe it is. There's also a uh, Lion Brand 24-7 has a cotton and I believe Bernat has um, a, a cotton yarn too. I think it's Bernat Handy, Handy, Handicraft. But anyway, as long as it is a cotton yarn, um, should be at least 85% or more cotton. This is 100% cotton, which is what I would um, really would recommend using is 100% cotton yarn. Anyway, um, the hook size I used is an H 5.0 uh, millimeter. This is a uh, Clover Amore and this is the hook size I will be using today. You want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle and you might want to have a stitch marker or two on hand just in case um, you need to have a stitch marker. So once you have all of your supplies, let's get started. So before we jump into today's tutorial, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's that little icon right down in the corner there with my picture on it. That'll automatically subscribe you to my channel. And if you don't want to miss any of my videos when I upload them, don't forget to ring that bell. That will notify you when I upload a video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That'll let YouTube know that you like my content. So to start our hot pad, we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook and a chain of 31. So just keep making little chains here until you get to 31 and I'll meet back up with you and we'll start on row 1. Now that we have our chain of 31, 
we're going to start second chain from hook. Now what I like to do is flip this chain over and we're going to work in these back bars of the chain. Now for this project I'd like to do this because it gives you a nice clean finished edge so when you're putting on your edging at the end of the project it makes it a lot easier to do the edging. You don't have to work in the chain this way I just think it makes it a little bit easier at the end when you're finishing your project. So we're going to go one, two, and go into the second chain right here and work a single crochet. So we're going to work a single crochet in each one of these back bars all the way down the chain. Just one single crochet. Continue working single crochet, one in each chain, to get to the end of the chain, and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the chain. We're at the end of row one. We have 30 single crochet. To start row two, chain one, turn the work. And for row two, we're going to do one single crochet in the back loop only. So the loops that are closer to you is the front loop. The loop away further from you is your back loop. So we're going to do one single crochet in the back loop only. So insert your hook into that back loop like this and do your single crochet. So we're going to work in those back loops only and put one single crochet into each stitch to the end of the row. So continue working one single crochet in the back loop only and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row two we still have 30 stitches, 30 single crochet. To start row three, we're going to chain one, turn the work, and for this row we're going to be working in the free loops of the row below. So just take your work and those loops right here that we missed that we weren't working in, so the front loops of row two right here. So we're going to be working single crochets in those loops, the front loops of row two. So the row, the row below. That's the row loops that we're going to be working in now. So just slip your hook in to that first stitch right there and single crochet. And go to the next one. This first cup, these first few rows are a little fiddly, but once you get a couple of rows on, then it's much easier to hold. So keep working single crochet in those free loops to the end of the row, and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row three. We still have 30 single crochet, and it kind looks a little bit like a taco. So it looks like you have two rows right next to each other and they kind of split like this. So that's what your row should be looking like. To start row four, we're going to chain one, turn the work, and we're going to be working in the current row again. So in this row right here that we just worked, this is the row we're going to be working in this time. And we're going to leave this row just the way it is and we're going to work in the back loop only of the current row. And we're going to single crochet. So 
So work one single crochet into each stitch to the end of the row. Then I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row four and I wanted to show you where, where your last stitch. Now see, sometimes it might look like it's a little bit hidden because your other row butts up right against it like this. So you might have to just pull that row down a little bit so you can see that last stitch. Just like that. And now we have our, our free loops are right there. So to start row five, we're gonna chain one, turn the work, and then you'll see those nice little ridges starting to form on the pot hole, on the hot pad. And we're gonna be working in the free loops. Now, when the ridges are facing you, that's when you're gonna work in the free loops. So you can just push the ridges down and then your free loops are right there. So you can see it'll be a lot more a lot easier once you get a few more rows on. So just go start single crocheting in those free loops. I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row five. And to start row six, you can chain one and you'll turn the work. Now this is the wrong side of the work and you can see there's no ridges on this side. And when we're looking at no ridges, that's when we're going to be working in the back loop of the current row. So this top row right here, that's when we're going to work in the, the back loops. So you're going to take your first stitch and go to the back loop, which is the loop furthest, furthest from you. So to start row six, we're going to go into that back first back loop and single crochet. Now that we have a little bit more to grip onto, it's a little bit easier to work with. And just single crochet in the back loop. I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. We're at the end of row six, and I'm just gonna chain one and turn the work. So would we be starting row seven next, and that would be a repeat of row five. So from here on out, we're just gonna repeat row five, row four, row five, row four, till you get to row 51 and row 51 will be a repeat of row 5. And you'll get these nice ridges. When you have a row or you're where you where the ridges are facing you. So when the right side is facing you, you're going to be working in the free loops of the previous row. So you'll be working in these loops right back here. Just like these loops. When you have a row where the wrong side is facing you, where the flat side is facing you, you're going to be working in the back loops of the previous row. So these loops right here, you'll be working in the back loops. So that's just a little way to remember where what loops you should be working in. So we just ended with row 6, so you're going to start with row 7, which is a repeat of row five. So go five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, till you get to row 51, which will be a repeat of row five, and I'll meet back up with you at the end 
of row 51. We're at the end of row 51. We still have 30 single crochets. We're now ready to start our border. I'm going to chain one, turn the work so that the ends of the rows are facing up, and we're going to go ahead and put a single crochet into each of the ends of the rows or every other row, um, whichever works out well for you. We're just the key is just to make sure that your single crochets are evenly spaced along the ends of the rows. I don't have a specific number of single crochets, just as long as it's evenly spaced and it's not puckering the uh, the hot pad. When you get to your corner, work two or three single crochets, whichever seems to work best for you for your tension so that the corner is rounded on your hot pad. For me, three single crochets seems to work best, but if you have a little bit looser tension, two single crochets might work best. So just keep working one single crochet all the way around and working two to three in your corners and I'll meet back up with you once we get all the way around our hot pad. So I made it all the way back around and we're just going to slip stitch to that first single crochet that we made and fasten off. Just like that. Now we just need to weave in our ends and I'll be right back. And here's our finished hot pad. All ready to be put on the table and put a nice, put a hot pan on that or teapot or whatever we want to put on this hot pad. So if you've liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.